Pum, pum, pum. Morning. Hey! Hey, look out. Oh, sorry, darling. I was just practising my grip. I think you're losing your grip. I mean, you nearly took my nose off. Oh, sorry. But the instructor says I can get the ball to go further if I use the interlocking grip. Mm, the further still if you use the golf club. <laughs> you don't think I use this for golf, do you? Oh, I do hope not. No, no, no. This is my tennis frying pan. Shall I serve your egg now? <laughs> Don't you dare. Hey, how far have you got in your golfing manual? Oh, addressing the ball. Ah, oh, hello, ball. <laughs> that's a very old joke. It's a very old game. Yeah, that's true. The book says it all started with the Picts knocking the heads of their conquered foes about the battlefield. Mm. Hence the expression, I'll give you a head start. <laughs> a head start. <laughs> Since you're in such a good mood this morning, you won't mind if I play another round with Beatty? Well, that's the third game this week. Well, I want you to be proud of me at Sir Dennis's golfing weekend. Well, I knew he got golf fever. I didn't know you caught it. I used to play it a lot with Daddy when I was at school. Mm. And you know how old passions often return in later years? Mm. I only had one passion when I was at school. She emigrated to Australia. <laughs> her name was, um... Her name was Doris Pitt. <laughs> Doris Pitt? Yeah, Doris Pitt. I told you about her. Big girl she was, big girl. <laughs> she, she wouldn't let me kiss her. What? In fact, she'd hardly let me touch her. <laughs> there was only one thing she allowed. She wasn't the one who had the thing about puff pastry. No, no, no. That was Violet Bletchley. Oh, yes, I remember. Mm. Volavant Violet. Mm. <laughs> that was the one. No, the only thing that Doris Pitt would let me do was nibble her ear. <laughs> I think this bacon put me in mind of her. And you were satisfied with that? Well, I had to be. I mean, she wouldn't let me try anything else. Big girl she was, big girl. <laughs> mind you, ear nibbling in the bicycle shed can be a very erotic experience for a nine-year-old. Well, yes, I suppose it must be. <laughs> mm, I remember once, I was, I was so engrossed, I was so carried away, and she stood up suddenly, and I hung there like a great big earring. <laughs> Terry, how much of this is true? Well, I mean, the bacon did remind me of her. <laughs> Must be the crackling. <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> oh, that'll be BT. We're going to drive to the golf course. That's a long drive. What? You'll need an eight iron to get over the houses. <laughs> eight iron to get over. I don't know. I'll get it on. Hello, Joan. Don't shut the door. Beatty's just coming. Come on, BT. I mind that paint work, for pity's sake. Hello, June. Beatty. You might have given her a hand, Malcolm. I had my briefcase to carry. <laughs> it's all right, June. Don't forget, Malcolm had a little murmur last year. Mm, yeah, I remember what it murmured, too. Lazy bounder. <laughs> I hate to rush you, Teddy, but we do have a 9.30 meeting with Sir Dennis. Oh, mm, crumbs. I've forgotten. I, and I wanted to get to that bargain warehouse that just opened. What for? Well, you see, they've got a whole set of gloves and a luxury golf bag for 39 95 They can't be up to much for that. That's what I said. Well, as long as they look all right. I mean, don't forget, I am representing our department in that golfing weekend. I can't turn up with my old set. Well, you've got a set of clubs, have you? Well, of course I have. Good heaven. Mark, you, I mean, they are a little bit past their best. Huh? <laughs> they may not look much, Malcolm, but Terry won a cup with those clubs. With those? No, yes, you are looking at the Skegness Under 8's Crazy Golf Championship <laughs> of 1937. He had thought of taking it up professionally, but sadly, he had to give it up when he was only nine. What happened? I lost my ball. <laughs> Damnation. In! The nine... the 9.30 meeting, Sir Dennis? Oh, yes. Come in, Medford. <laughs> <laughs> Don't step on the balls, Medford! <laughs> well, he just bought them. It wasn't intentional, sir. So I did uh, any idea how much these damn things cost? Uh, no, sir. Neither have I. I sent Miss Fennell out to get them. New, improved shape. Can you see it? Oh, I certainly can, sir. Yes, it's, uh, um, round. <laughs> well, of course it's round. It's a damn ball, isn't it? What do you expect it to be square? Uh, what do you mean to say, sir? Is it it's, uh, a more, more round? <laughs> how can it be more round? <laughs> Things either round or it isn't round. And if it's round, it can't be rounder. And if it isn't round, it isn't a damn ball at all, is it? No, sir. No, sir. The secret is in these dimples. They're in a different place from usual. Oh, oh yes, of course. Like, like, the, like the song. 
What song? On the baby's knuckle, all the baby's <laughs> There were the baby's dimples. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very old song. And uh, they all are usually um, found under the uh, safety pin, as it turns out. What are? The uh, dimples. What, the golf ball's dimples? No, no, sir, the baby's dimples. What baby? <laughs> well, the, the baby with the dimples. Medford, we are talking about balls. Well, I... well, I'm, I'm talking... Uh, about balls, sir. You see, uh, the new arrangement of these dimples is supposed to improve its aerodynamic accuracy. Oh, does it, sir? Does it help? No, of course not. <laughs> I've been trying to get one of these little white swine into that glass for over an hour now. So the fault must either be with the balls or these putters. Ah, uh, Miss Fennell, I've got another putter here that NBG. In! Uh, file numbers for the golf weekend, Sir Dennis. Well, put them on my desk. Oh, yes. Now, sit down, the two of you. And these are the last half dozen, Sir Dennis. Oh, yeah. Oh. Well, I've tried that one already. <laughs> oh, yes, so you have. Well, I'll have it straightened out along with the others and see if the outfitters will take them back. Are you coming on this weekend, Miss Fanny? Oh, yes, indeed. Mm. But here is a spectator. Golf is a complete mystery to me. I hardly know one end of a caddy from another. <laughs> yes, well, I'll... Uh... I'll give this one a try, and Miss Fennel, see if you can get me another set of uh, balls with more conventional dimples. It's dimples? Oh, how sweet! <laughs> that will be all, Miss Fennel. Yes. Well, I'm delighted that my idea of a golfing weekend is proving so popular. You two chaps will be playing, of course. Oh, yes, indeed, sir. Actually, ten is one cups for it. Oh, no. no oh! <laughs> So, we have a champion in our midst. Oh, uh, just crazy golf, sir. Oh, I don't blame you. I'm crazy about it myself. <laughs> in fact, only the other day, I was wondering whatever I did before I discovered it. I used to feel that way about sex. What? <laughs> um, it, it, it's wonderful exercise. Yes. Now, well, what I really called you in here for was uh, to discuss this presentation to Colonel Culpepper. He uh, retires from the board of directors this year, and uh, we uh, feel that this weekend will be perfect hell. Uh, <laughs> we are celebrating his 40 years. Us. Now, as you know, he's an old swine! <laughs> <laughs> Member of the golf club. So we thought that if we gave him something like a, a new set of clubs, he could quite honestly say, this is no bloody good at all. <laughs> Think on. If you ask me, the best thing to give that old Culpepper is a new hearing aid. I think he's a bore. No, oh, Beatty can't stand him. At last year's dinner and dance, he actually pinched her bottom. Oh, the dirty old... Uh, quite. Then he had the nerve to blame me on a spare pair of teeth he was carrying in his trouser pocket. <laughs> Which was quite untrue, as I later found out. How? No teeth marks. Oh. <laughs> right? The important thing about this retirement is it creates a vacancy on the board, which I mean to fill. So this weekend, I'm going to challenge Sir Dennis to a game of golf. And when he's in a good mood, after having beaten me rotten, I should put my case for a junior directorship. But, uh, I mean, supposing you beat him? But of course I won't beat him! But, but he's hopeless. I mean, he was blaming the putters and the balls. There was nothing wrong with any of them. What did you say? <laughs> Me, sir? Nothing wrong with the putters. Uh, well... Nothing wrong with the balls. Well, sir... Do you realise that I have been playing carpet golf for over an hour? And I haven't got one single ball where it ought to be. So, if there's nothing wrong with the putters, and there's nothing wrong with the balls, there's only one thing that can be wrong, isn't there? Well, Sir Dennis... Isn't there? Yes, there is. And I think you know what it is. Oh, God! Do I really? Well, I mean, you're an intelligent man, sir. And if you've eliminated the putters and the balls, there's only one thing left. And what is that? Your carpet's too lumpy. <laughs> oh, yeah. You 
Isn't this beautiful? So then this may be a crackpot, but this weekend is a cracking idea. Oh, yes, thank you. And take special care of the new bag and clubs. They're, they're just out of the polythene. I still can't believe those clubs were so cheap. Inexpensive, not cheap. Oh, sorry. And bargain warehouses buy their stuff in bulk. I mean, they get all their stuff from abroad. Yes, I know, but from Borneo? I mean, do they even play golf in Borneo? They play golf everywhere, even on the moon, if you remember. Not with those clubs. They don't look very sturdy to me. Look, there's nothing wrong with that bag and clubs. I mean, and they look sensational. So let's drop it, shall we? for a round on the Northbrook course. Ugh. What's the matter? I ran into the beastly Colonel Culpepper. Or rather, as he would have it, I backed into his hand. <laughs> it's not again. I thought something happened to a man's, uh, you know, sex drive when they got to his age. It does. It's called desperation. <laughs> if it was only straws he clutched at, I wouldn't mind. It is ridiculous to think he's the guest of honour. I mean, he just hasn't any. Do you know, last night at dinner, he kept leaning forward so that I could speak into his ear. So he could hear better? No, so that he could look down the front of my dress. <laughs> Ugh, shudders. Well, Terry sorted him out. He started flicking his peas at the Colonel's deaf aid. <laughs> <laughs> Poor old boy, he couldn't understand why it kept popping. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just thought I'd warn you. Sir Dennis has booked Sunnybrook Course for 11.45 and he's heading this way looking for someone to play with. <laughs> Poor Dennis. Nobody wants to play with him. You have to take his toys home. Well, is it any wonder, Miss Fennel? If you win, he's in a filthy temper. And if you lose, he thinks you're not trying. Has Terry played him yet? Terry spent most of the weekend in our room hiding from Sir Dennis. Oh, whatever for? Well, Malcolm has convinced Sir Dennis that Terry's a golfing champion, and every time he sees him, he challenges him to a game. Well, I must say, whenever your husband does emerge, he looks every inch a champion. Oh! <laughs> Safe to play through. Uh, Sir Dennis is looking for an opponent. Oh, I'm in no danger. Oh, no fear. I just met Malcolm, and he's offered to give Sir Dennis a round. Uh, oh, and talking of rounds, is there anything I can get you, uh, ladies? Nothing for me, thank you. No, uh, we're fine, thanks. Uh, let me see, what, uh, what do you suggest? Do you Bonnie, Martini, Campari, Cinsalo Bianco? I want to drink it, not put it behind my ears. <laughs> uh, I have a whiskey. Isn't uh, Malcolm Dicing with Death agreeing to play a match with Sir Dennis? Oh, he's been wanting one all weekend in order to discuss the junior directorship. Can I have a splash of soda? Ah, oh, oh, Smoke. <laughs> Ah, been out on the course working up a sweat, have you? That's the stuff. That's what separates you champions from the rest of us. Uh, but, Sir Dennis, I am not a champion. Well, you won a cup for it, didn't you? When I was seven. When you were seven? Yes. <laughs> Good grief, you must be fantastic now. <laughs> but what about a game? Huh? This might be our last chance. No, I, I couldn't really, uh, because, you see, I mean, Malcolm. Malcolm is so looking forward to playing with you, sir. Oh, that's all right. We'll make the threesome. Oh, uh, uh, June? Uh, uh, Terry never plays threesome, Sir Dennis. What? Right. You see, three is his unlucky number, and you know how superstitious champions can be. But I am not a champion. Oh, sorry, darling. That's quite all right, Mayford. I understand. Oh, thank heaven for that. <laughs> we'll make it a foursome instead. I... Oh, only <laughs> again! You lovely lady. <laughs> oh, the very man, Colonel Culpepper. That's your outdoor togs, and I see. Colonel? Planning! Uh, to get the sun into your rosy cheeks, eh? <laughs> Carl Pepper! We're going to play a round, Colonel. Play a round? <laughs> uh, Colonel Carl Pepper! If you want to play a round, I'm your man. <laughs> <laughs> if you like a drink, Colonel. Oh, I 
much whiskey, eh? And my dear, I said, fill up my flask. Oh, I say, I didn't intend that you should do... Damn generous of you to put it on your billards. Ah, oh, this damn thing's been playing me up all weekend. Actually found a boiled pea in it last night. <laughs> Good heavens. <laughs> you fancy a game, Colonel? A game? Oh, yes. I'm game for anything. You ask the lady. Yes, well, when you finish your drink, I'll get me clubs. Are you going around, my dear? <laughs> yes, I I'll be on the other course. Hey, hey, what you say? I'm on the... <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the other course. Oh, pity. Still, if you do get into trouble in a bunker, at least you can't play me. Hey, what? I'll get my club. <laughs> Sir Dennis, I'm yeah. awfully sorry, but I can't play in this match. Now, look here, Mayor Cook. I know that you have heard that I don't like to lose, so, of course, you're afraid of beating the pants off me. Oh, your pants have never been safer, sir. <laughs> well, understand this. I don't mind losing to champions. That's how one learns. But, oh, Sir so you've got nothing to learn from me. Don't you patronise me, Medford. <laughs> That's one thing I will not tolerate. And if I think for one second that you are playing badly on purpose, that I can win, you'll be throwing away more than the match. Oh, Sir Dennis, I promise I won't lose on purpose. That's a spirit. See you on the first team. But, Sir Dennis... The gentleman's flask, sir. Oh, thank you. Mm. Well, that won't help, Terry. Well, what am I going to do? He expects me to win. I haven't played for years. He'll think I'm doing it on purpose. It'll come back to you. Now, just remember four things. Mm. Left arm straight. Left arm straight. Head down. Head down. Swing back slowly. Swing back slowly. Eyes always on the ball. Eyes always on the ball. You stab me in the back. I'll stab you in the uh, back. What? <laughs> Malcolm. Why did you muscle in on my game with Sir Dennis? It wasn't Terry's fault. I I'll, do, I'll do the best I can to win. Don't you dare do that. What? But look, if Sir Dennis loses, he'll be in a foul, foul temper. Mm. Then bang goes my chance of a junior directorship. But because of you, Sir Dennis thinks that Terry's a champion. Don't worry about that. You mean you can fix it? Well, of course. How? I tell him you were lying. He... I? <laughs> I'm lying? Oh, come on. Oh, Malcolm. Don't forget your clubs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> June. Slow, head, eyes, down, left arm, always on the ball. One thing I do insist on is complete and utter silence on the team. This is a very difficult course. Very difficult. <laughs> Colonel, you're hearing aid. In your own time, Hodge. Off you go. It's whistling. Tell him, Harris, will you? Your hearing aid is whistling, Colonel. What'd you say? It's making a funny sort of noise. Funny stories? Hang on, I turn my hearing aid up. I love it when you are. No, Colonel, your hearing aid is whistling. Who's whistling? Your hearing aid. Well, I can't hear anything. Well, if you could, you wouldn't need a hearing aid, would you, sir? <laughs> will you please shut up over there? Sorry. Who shouted? I have an important putt to make here. You confounded oof! We're trying to play golf over here. <laughs> All right, sir. I'll report you to the management. I'm sorry, he's a bit deaf. Ah, deaf, is he? That explains everything. <laughs> Apologies, old boy. I'm a bit deaf myself. He had noticed that, sir. What? Everything all right, Terry? Yes. Will you shut up, Medford? Oh, I'm terribly sorry, sir. I'm not the one who's deaf. Sorry, sir. <laughs> Wasn't that your wife, Medford? No, no, no. Uh, uh, yes, yes, I suppose it was, really. Colonel, I am trying to play my first shot. Get on with it, then. I'm not stopping you. I don't think 
think I'm going to be able to concentrate on this game if I only knew how Terry was getting on. Our eighth hole and their ninth run parallel, so we might meet up then. If Terry ever gets as far as the ninth... Oh, don't worry, June. Malcolm will look after him. In a crisis, he can be marvellously supportive. The idiot. <laughs> Hit the ball, for pity's sake. Frankie, you're right, Sir Dennis. This is a very difficult course. <laughs> New clubs here. Hasn't broken them in yet. <laughs> Please let me hit it just once. Left arm straight. Head down. Slow back swing. I always on the ball. <laughs> Good God, it works. Good God. Did you have to hit it quite so hard? <laughs> One June. I absolutely love those club covers. Mummy knitted them for me. They're such an unusual shape. That's because they were supposed to be balaclavas, but she got the measurements wrong. <laughs> Bedford! For the last time, no noise and no unnecessary movement on the golf course. Sorry, Sir Dennis. I didn't hear anything. No, but you can't lip read. <laughs> First opportunity, think of a good excuse for getting out of this game. Such as what? Oh, break a leg. Go break your own leg. Well, sprain some minor part of your body. My body doesn't contain any minor parts. They're all major. <laughs> I shall not forget this betrayal, Teddy. Betrayal? Bedford! Will you concentrate on the game? Now look what you've done. How can anybody play a decent game of golf if they're continually dattering? So I told him I just wouldn't stand for it. I said it was all right in the old days, but not now. Nice one, June. Yes, I do find I'm more accurate since I've been using the overlapping grip. Oh, I couldn't get along with it at all. Made me feel quite claustrophobic. Well, the main thing is to be comfortable. I mean, let's face it. If you're not comfortable, you're not enjoying yourself. And if you're not enjoying yourself, what is the point of playing? Absolutely. After all, it's only a game. Can't he see his balls out here? I think perhaps the Colonel's been over um, exercising. Let Terry take him back to the hotel. We are playing a foursome, Harris, and you cannot do that with two people. Go and tell him where his ball is, Medford. Yes, Sir Dennis. Colonel! What do you say? Your ball's over here, sir. What? Your ball's over near the fairway. I know where my ball is. <laughs> well, what are you looking for? My clubs! <laughs> Since you seem to have forgotten the very rudiments of the game, perhaps I should explain them to you once again. Golf consists of placing a small white ball, one and a half inches in diameter, on top of a larger ball, approximately 8,000 miles in diameter. <laughs> and the idea is to hit the smaller one and leave the large one where it is. I don't seem to be having a lot of luck. I, I think the worms must imagine there's an earthquake going on. I'm surprised they don't wrap themselves round your ball. Seems to be the only safe place. <laughs> Mitford, hurry up! 
young man. Coming, sir. Big bully. <laughs> Right, your turn, partner. <laughs> Colonel, it's your putt. <laughs> You're right. It's my putt. Thank you. Thank you. Sir Dennis, what's the matter now? I've lost all my clubs. Goodness knows where they've got to. Well, that's that, sir. Now Terry will have to give up. No, it's all right. He can use some of ours. Oh, I couldn't do that. I mean, I mean, you wouldn't ask you who'd even knew in to use somebody else's fiddle. You might as well use a fiddle the way you've been playing. <laughs> oh, I think it's better that Terry should give up, sir. Oh, very well. Well, I'll have to ask my partner, see what he thinks. Uh, what do you say, Colonel? Should we let Medford here drop out? Oh, my God. <laughs> Looks like he's beat me to it. <laughs> so I brought Culpepper back here and left Malcolm to work on his promotion with Sir Dennis. Well, I shouldn't worry too much, Mr Medford. Mr Harris would never have got the vacancy anyway. The Colonel retired only on the understanding that his son should take his place. He's got a son? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, not quite so deaf, but just as outrageous. Mm -hmm. Oh, Malcolm, how'd it go? We lost. Well, that's what you wanted, isn't it? I don't want to talk about it. A large brandy, please. Uh, congratulations, Sir Dennis. What do you mean? What are you talking about? We lost, didn't well, we? Well, Malcolm said that we lost. No, not you and him. Him and me. Well, in that case, who won? We did. Mm, what? We met up at the ninth, and Sir Dennis asked us to make up a foursome. Boys against girls. And the girls won. Might I have a word with my little winner in private? I'm sorry, Malcolm, but you were rotten. That doesn't help. <laughs> Miss Fennell, come here. I want you to collect up all my golfing equipment and give it to your favourite charity. Oh, that saves the whale. Mm. But I don't think they play golf. <laughs> no, and after this weekend, neither do I. Oh, sorry, darling. Did you beat them by a lot? Every hole. In other words, you thrashed them? Just a bit. You made my boss and my, my governor, you made them look like a pair of pathetic twits, is that right? Sorry. Do you know something? What? I love you. <laughs> what? Well, I mean, they made me suffer agonies out there, and you and Beatty came along like the Lone Ranger and Tonto and gave him a bullet. You mean you're not angry? I'm delighted. I'll uh, tell you what, as soon as we get back, I am going to buy you a new set of clubs. Oh, we can't afford it. Oh, yes, we can. There's this bargain warehouse I've found that's just open. <laughs> There's this warehouse? <laughs> 